Hello there, Berks County Quarantine Open Mics Children's Hour, and I hope that you enjoyed listening to um, Mrs. Joe Mercer, who was just reading to us um, The Hobbit earlier. I always enjoy listening to her. Now, for the next half hour of Children's Hour, you'll be with me, Jessie, for Stories and Songs with Jessie. So, um, I thought that I've, now actually I've read this particular book the very, very first time that I ever went um, Facebook Live on Children's Hour here on Berks County Quarantine Open Mic. And the book is called The Case for Loving, the, um, yeah, The Fight for Interracial Marriage. And I just thought that with everything going on um, in our world at the moment, that it was a very appropriate book to reread again. Because a few of my um, friends on Facebook and like other family members, um, especially like friends and family members of mine who are teachers and who have little ones, were looking for examples of books about inclusivity and diversity. So yeah just thought that I'd share this example again because it's a wonderful children's book about an actual historical event and also I actually I found the news articles or the newspaper articles and I think this might be a people's magazine article about how four years ago um, in December of 2016 as it says here um, was when the movie loving was premiered and again it's a historical fiction but still um really good movie that i saw in the theater um when it came out back in 2016 and yep it shows the couple that played the actors that played the couple down there in the bottom of this photo and then up here is the actual couple um richard and mildred loving so yeah i just absolutely love this book and love that i purchased it and I think that it's a great children's book depicting as I said an actual historical event so I hope you enjoy first comes love then comes marriage Donald Peggy and Sydney had two parents who loved them and who loved each other in fact from almost the moment Richard Loving met Mildred Jeter they wanted to get married and have a family but for them, it wasn't that simple. And here is why. Has really nice illustrations here. Richard was white, a fair skinned boy who got quickly sunburned in July. Mildred was what they called colored in those days. Her skin was a creamy caramel. In 1958, they lived in the small town of Central Point, Virginia, where people of every shade from the color of chamomile to tea, or from chamomile tea to summer midnight, made their homes. Richard Loving was a tall, quiet man of English and Irish heritage. The person he loved most was Mildred Jeter. Mildred was part African American, part Native American, and she was thin as a rail. That's how she got the nickname String Bean. When Richard popped the question, String Bean jumped with joy. The two were in love. They felt it should be their right to get married. Sadly, it was not. In Virginia, or 16 other states, in those places, marriage between people of different races was against the law. A hundred years earlier, slavery divided America along color lines. Even after slavery ended, some white people weren't used to blacks being free, let alone free to marry whom they chose. If you married someone who had skin color unlike your own, you could go to jail. Mildred and Richard wanted to get married, but they did not want to spend, it, spend any time in prison. Mm -hmm. 
Although they couldn't have a legal marriage in Virginia, they could right next door in Washington, D.C. So they invited a few friends and family to witness their wedding across state lines. At the ceremony, nobody objected when Richard said, I do, and Mildred said, I do, too. The Lovings were officially pronounced husband and wife. The blushing bride and her groom smiled all the way from D.C. back to their house in Virginia. They couldn't wait to start a family. But soon, something terrible happened. In the middle of the night, they were awoken from their sleep. It was the police. An officer shouted at Richard, what are you doing with that woman? Richard proudly pointed to their marriage certificate hanging on their wall. That's not good here, the policeman boomed. And just like that, Mildred and Richard were taken away and locked up in jail. They were charged with unlawful cohabitation, in quotes there, which means living together was against the law. The Lovings didn't think there was anything unlawful about their love at all. If anything, the way they were treated should have been unlawful. After a few nights behind bars, Richard and Mildred were told they had to leave Virginia if they wanted to live together as Mr. and Mrs. Loving. So with heavy hearts, the pair hugged their families, packed their bags, and left their home. They tried to make a life for themselves in Washington, D.C. Richard found a job laying bricks and string bean gave birth to three babies, three different shades of milk to chocolate brown, Donald, Peggy, and Sydney. But the city didn't suit the Lovings. There were too many cars. There was too much concrete. They missed the central point where it, with its rolling hills and open spaces. They missed their friends and families, and they missed their home. They wanted to return to Virginia for good, so they hired lawyers to help fight for what was right. By now, it was 1966, and the times they were a change in. Brand new ideas like equal rights for people of all colors were replacing the old fearful ways of thinking. The lawyers worked around the clock to make the case for interracial marriage as strong as possible. It was time to take the loving case all the way to the Supreme Court. Okay. On June 12th, 1967, which June 12th, yeah, it's actually coming up really soon. <laughs> On June 12, 1967, when the case of Loving versus Virginia began, Richard and Mildred stayed at home with Donald, Peggy, and Sydney. They were all nervous and afraid they would not win. The state argued that in order to preserve the purity of the white race, in quotes, blacks and whites must remain separate. Then it was the Loving's lawyer's turn to present the case. They said it was unconstitutional to make marriage a crime because of race. And they read a message from Richard himself. 
Tell the court I love my wife, and it is just unfair that I can't live with her in Virginia. That's right, Richard. It didn't take long for a decision to be made. It was unanimous. The court ruled in favor of the Lovings. Interracial couples could now legally marry in Virginia. Richard and Mildred hugged. They won the right to their love. They were free at last. Over nine years after their arrest, the Lovings packed their bags one final time. Richard planned to build a big roomy brick house in Central Point, Virginia. Stringbean was ready to start their life over. The Loving family returned to Virginia to live happily and legally ever after. And that is the end. <laughs> There's, yeah, in the author's note at the back. Um, well, first of all, the author and the illustrator are both an interracial couple living in Brooklyn, New York. But you see this photo here is actually one that was in the newspaper, I believe. Yeah, it's Mr. and Mrs. Loving with their three kids. And that paper, or that photo was in the paper the year 1967 when they won their case for um, Loving versus Virginia and got it passed for interracial marriage to be legal in that state. So that was the story for today on Stories and Songs with Jesse. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, um, I already read this book um, the very, very first time that I did Stories and Songs with Jesse here on Berks County Quarantine Open Mic, but I thought that it was awesome to go back and reread that again. So, as usual, I've got some songs lined up for you. Um, actually, I just sang this song last night on a, on a different group. It's a karaoke group, but I thought that, again, it would be fun to perform it again because it has very appropriate lyrics for the times that we're going through, I think. So I hope you enjoy. It's called The Best of Times by Sticks. Tonight's the night we'll make history. Honey, you and I. Cause I'll take any risk to tie back the hands of time. To stay with you here tonight. I know you feel these are the worst of times. I do believe it's true. When people lock their doors and hide inside, rumor has it it's the end of paradise. But I know if the world just passed us by, baby, I know I wouldn't have to cry, no, no. The best of times are when I'm alone with you. Some rain, some shine. We'll to our memories of yesterday will last a lifetime we'll take the best forget the rest 
and someday we'll fly. These are the best of times. These are the best of times. The headlines read, these are the worst of times. I do believe it's true. I feel so helpless, like a boat against the tide. I wish this summer wind could bring back paradise. But I know, if the world turned upside down, Maybe I know you'll always be around my mind. The best of times are when I'm alone with you. Some rain, some shine. We'll make this a world for two. All right. <laughs> I hope you liked that one. Yeah, that's um, a great song by the band Sticks. I know that, yeah, the Hornbuggers love Sticks a lot. So, let's see here. What can I do next? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm. Oh. I think I haven't done, or maybe I already did this one too, but it's never a bad thing to redo a good song, right? <laughs> so, or actually, no, I don't think I've done this one yet, so I'm going to do this. I dedicate this song to um, a good friend of mine that I actually met through going to karaoke events. Um, and I've known him for years. His name is Tyler. Shout out to you, Tyler. Uh, this is a song that he just recently introduced me to that I think is a pretty well-known, yeah, Carly Jepsen song. It's called Run Away With Me. But I think it's fun, so I'm going to sing it for you. You're stuck in my head, stuck in my heart, stuck in my body, body. I wanna go, get out of here, I'm sick of this party, party. I'd run away, I'd run away with you. Ooh. This is the part you gotta say, all that you're feeling, feeling. Packing a bag, leaving tonight, while everyone's sleeping, sleeping. Let's run away, I'd run away with you. Ooh, cause you make me feel like I could be driving you all night And I'll find your lips in the street lights I wanna be there with you Ooh, baby, take me to the feeling I'll be your sinner in secret When the 
lights go out. Run away with me, run away with me, baby. Every single minute, I'll be your hero and win it. When the lights go out, run away with me, run away with me. Up in the clouds, high as a kite, over the city, city. We never sleep, we never try. When you are with me, with me, I wanna stay. I wanna stay with you. Ooh. Cause you make me feel like I could be driving you all night. And I'll find your lips in the street lights. I wanna be there with you. Turn the world to gold oh. Over the weekend We could turn the world to gold I hope that you liked that one. I never sang that for karaoke before. I think it was pretty good. <laughs> All right. I think. I think, yeah. I think I have enough time for one more. Let's see here. Oh, this is just a fun one. I'll do this again. I know I did this already, too, at one point. Whoop. After this YouTube ad. One moment. But, um... Yeah, this next one is from a, a cool Broadway show, actually, that uh, my dad and I were in a community theater version of it. It's called The Addams Family Musical. And this is a song that Wednesday sings, actually, um, when she starts falling in love for the first time um, with a boy. It's called Pulled. <laughs> it's just really an over-the-top and fun, cheesy song. So I hope you like it. I don't have a funny disposition. I'm not known for being too amused. My demeanor's locked in one position. See my face, I'm enthused. Suddenly, however, I've been puzzled. Bunny rabbits make me want to cry. All my inhibitions have been puzzled. And I think I know I'm being pulled in a new direction, but I think I like it. I think I like it. I'm being pulled in a new direction. Though my painful pursuit somehow birdies took root, all the things I detested impossibly cute. God, what do I do? 
mother always said be kind to strangers but she doesn't know what they destroy i can feel the clear and present dangers when she learns that the boy has got me pulled in a new direction but i think i like it i think i like it i'm being pulled in a new direction and this feeling i know is impossible so i'll confide that i've tried but i can't let it go it's a disgustingly true pull 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 puppy dogs with droopy faces unicorns with dancing mice sunrise in wide open spaces disney world i'll go there twice butterflies at picnic lunches bunches of chrysanthemums lollipops and pillow fights and christmas Sugar plums, children quartets and chia pets and afternoon banana splits. Angels watching as I sleep and Liberace's greatest hits. They've got me pulled in a new direction. They keep insisting I'll stop resisting. Just watch me pulled in a new direction. I should stay in the dark, not obey every spark. But the boy's got a bite better far than his boy. Well, I hope that you enjoyed stories and songs with Jesse today. And yep, yeah, and earlier, um, that the first part of Ch Children's Hour, I hope you enjoyed listening to The Hobbit, read by the fabulous Joe Mercer. I hope that all of you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. I think that it's supposed to be beautiful and sunny today, at least where I am in Berks County. So get out, enjoy the sunshine, but of course, stay safe. Thank you for listening, everyone. Bye-bye.